fire up our container using Docker. And we're going to let that go ahead and pull down all of its Docker information there. While we're waiting, again, this is very easy to do. It's very simple to run that Docker command to get your container up and running. Again, I'm using a data directory that's local on my file system. And let's go ahead and load up this page. This is localhost 9090. And it's asking me to log in. And we're going to log in with admin. And our password is non prod password. That's from our environment variables. And the first thing we're asked to do is create a bucket. So I've logged in. It drops me straight onto the bucket page. I have no buckets right now, so I'm going to create one. And I'm just going to name it dev. And that's it. I'm not going to add in any versioning. I'm not going to add in any object locking or any quotas, things like that. I don't need any of that stuff for a simple proof of concept that I'm going to be writing here in my course. So I just really need this dev bucket. So I just name it dev. I create the bucket and I'm set. There's no files in it yet. I could absolutely upload a file should I care to, but at this stage, I don't need to worry about that. So the other thing I need now that I've got my bucket is I need a user to log in. Again, I don't want to use that admin user for my clients to access. So I need to set up a dedicated user for my client. Again, right now, no users available. So I need to go ahead and create one. And I'm going to call this one dev user. And I'm going to give it a password. I'll, I'll go ahead and show it to you. Dev password. Again, I, don't use it in production because now it's on a video and everybody in the universe can see it. This application I'm going to be writing is going to need to both read and write data. So I'm going to give it that read write. I don't need it to be a console admin. I'm not going to be accessing any diagnostics. The other policies I have available are read only or write only. Neither of those are going to work. So read write is really the least amount of privileges that I need to give this dev user. So with that, with my dev user, my dev password, that's all I need to do. I save it and I'm good to go. There's groups you can set up. There's all sorts of different ways you can set up this, this stuff. But for a very simple, very straightforward, minimal install that I can actually now do stuff with, this is all I need. A bucket and a user. With that, I can now start writing code. In a production environment, all of this console work will probably be done for you by your object storage administrator, so you're not going to have to do this yourself. But it's handy to be able to look at it, see what's going on, and understand how this stuff is created.